Uh, well, it's my pleasure actually to follow Lester tonight because one of the things that I'm engaged in trying to do is something that he's just said is almost impossible, extremely unlikely, which is to make marijuana in the plant form into a prescription medicine approved by the FDA. And I think that it is possible, and there are major obstacles, but I'm going to report to you where we're at in that struggle. I'm going to also let you know what's going on as far as legalizing marijuana in the United States, and also give you a brief update on the psychedelic <coughs> research around the world, because that'll influence how you understand where we're at with marijuana. But first, I'd like to thank the Greenleaf Party for uh, organizing this event. And I think it's been a great opportunity for us to come here and see what you guys are doing. Um, I'd also really like to thank, uh, even though I don't think she's here, the Palestinian speaker, because I, I thought it took a lot of courage for her to come and say some things that she must have known was yeah. not going to be sympathetically received. And Rachel Hamburger, I'd like to thank you also for coming. Um, and also, you, you may not be aware, but we're also about to start MDMA research in Israel for post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, but once we were um, through with dealing with the Ministry of Health, and uh, I mean, it, it's been many, many years, started in 1998, but the very last condition of approval was that the anti-drug authority in Israel had to put in writing their support for the project. And they did that. And so I'm just so grateful for the willingness to let us do this research. <laughs> what you might also not know is that in these international drug control contexts, that the fact that in Israel there is a needle exchange program, that's also very courageous because the drugs are in the United States is not sympathetic at all with needle exchange. So that in some places, in some areas of drug policy, the Israeli anti-drug authority and the Israeli authorities are moving faster than the United States is. And I had actually not thought that that would happen. So that, that, that shows that there is a lot of support here for rationally rethinking things. And also even with medical marijuana, they're ahead of us in the United States here. By having more doctors able to give recommendations, by trying to have a domestic supply that people can get through pharmacies. So that there's a lot of openness here, I think, in Israel for making change in drug policy. Now, actually, to give you a, a bit of background, um, I'm not a, a real doctor. I'm a, a doctor in public policy, and I have a PhD, and my dissertation was on the regulation of the medical use of psychedelic drugs and marijuana. So, from the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard. So, what, what I think of myself, I'm not a psychiatrist or a therapist dealing with individual patients, but I'm a uh, public policy person dealing with sick public policies. <laughs> Trying to find a way for societies as a whole to come together and bring about a more rational view on public policy. So a lot of it is working with the individuals in the drugstore's office and the, um, various DEA and NIDA, the, dealing with them both as representatives of having to represent policies, but also people who have their own fears and anxieties about drugs and what they can do, and trying to help them understand what the other perspectives are and help them to, to deal with their own fears and anxieties. Now, where the motivation comes from, and this is just a big vision I have to give you very briefly, it's that there is this, uh, I mean, here in the Middle East you know more and more, there's a rise of fundamentalism all over the world, and there are more religious wars, there are more... Um, conflicts now. In the United States, there's been the rise of Christian fundamentalism. Uh, it's, it's very dangerous phenomenon. We know Jewish fundamentalism, who, uh, people who are willing to be overly provocative towards Arabs, try to claim land because God gave it to us. And so that I think that this rise of fundamentalism is, is pretty much the, one of the core problems, if not the core problem of the world right now. And for Many of us, uh, psychedelics in particular, marijuana also, have helped us to have these experiences of connection. It's kind of unitive, mystical experiences where you feel part of everything that is. And that there's a deeper sense of identity than uh, our religion, or our country, or our gender, or our race. And that once you have this deeper sense of identity, you're more likely to be tolerant. You're more likely to 
appreciate differences rather than be scared by differences. And that that's where peacemaking can come from. So I 